you know, I'm sitting here with Bill Kent. Bill Kent is a friend of mine. I've gotten to know Bill because his name's all over West Texas um, and seven other states we were just talking about. And mm -hmm. uh, you may yep. have been to a Kent Quick before. And uh, have I ever told you the story of me tearing up one of your um, gas, whatever, you, gas pumps? Uh-uh. <laughs> I <laughs> know you haven't. So I'm, I can't I'm wait. at your facility and yeah. I'm pumping gas <laughs> and I do what a lot of people do. And you probably wish we wouldn't do this. I, I put it in my truck and I go inside. And so uh, go inside to get my drink. I usually go get my iced tea with a splash of lemonade. And uh, and I'm engrossed in thought. And, and I pay and I go outside and I get in my truck and I don't take the, the nozzle, nozzle out. out. And I take off and I hear this thump. I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? And obviously things have changed over the years because I'm not the first person to no, have done not. that. And it just disconnected. It did. And the funny thing was, is one of your, apparently a technician or a mechanic or whatever you call them that works right. for you right. was actually there. And he goes, it's all right. I can fix it real quick. <laughs> just don't tell. Did you Make come back? Oh, I stopped. You I did. was like, okay. oh, my goodness. And he goes, it happens all the time. And I said, just don't tell Bill. Don't tell Bill. <laughs> I wish I you would have. I wish you would have. I'd have loved to have that over your head <laughs> all exactly these years. That's exactly right. But, Bill, okay, I, I have a little bit of history in the in the food business. Right. And um, we always refer to them as C-stores. Right. So give me a little bit of just Kent Quick store history. When did it start? Okay. Did okay. Um, well, my, my father um, actually came through in his career uh, in the refining business, mm -hmm. and there was a small refinery out of Monahans where I grew up and went to high school. Um, and in the 50s, when he was the president of the refinery and he owned uh, the family had sold him uh, a chunk of it. My dad was very poor and mm -hmm. self-made, very uh, great man. Um, he bought a chain of service stations that were based out of Big Springs called okay. Reed Oil Company. Reed Oil. Reed Oil. And my dad bought them and they were part of the refining business mm -hmm. when he bought them. They put them in, under the refinery. And then in um, it wasn't short, too shortly after that, they sold the refinery. The family, my dad, mm -hmm. um, sold the refinery. My dad, in lieu of taking all cash, said, I'd like those service stations. So that's, and then the names got changed to Kent Oil and Kent Distributors. Okay. And that's, and that that's started probably, in 1957. So that's back when they were probably attendants coming out and yes, pumping gas. Yes, yes, we had a lot. Yeah, we, I don't think then we were even self serve. I think it was oh, all yeah. attendants and yeah. uh, selling regular. Yeah, yeah, regular. Uh, um, leaded, <laughs> leaded, leaded gasoline. Yes, right. For about nineteen cents. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a garage probably yes, attached yeah, to it. Yeah, had had that, and then uh, and then in in the sixties, uh, pretty much throughout the whole sixties, my dad really expanded a lot. He he ended up with about eighty or ninety sites, and they went from El Paso up to the Panhandle mm -hmm. to South Texas, Presidio, and um, you know south of us, and Uvalde, and yep. a bunch of different places. So he really expanded. The, the footprint quite a bit. Um, and then I had an older brother. Uh, my oldest brother, Jim, is the one that convinced my dad we ought to try convenience stores because mm -hmm. they were just starting to yep. pop up and get really big. 7-Eleven mm -hmm. started, yep. uh, in the, but it was in the 60s and early 70s. So we, we started, and my brother started that transition, and that's how we started getting into the convenience stores and taking some of the stores that were better mm -hmm. kind of converting the bays into a little convenience store right. and it was you know you know it was pretty cheesy but it it worked it worked yeah it worked and is that about so that's when the whole c deal. store concept started evolving was late 70s yeah it was and you had you you kind of had a division because you had people that were building convenience stores there were chains out there mm -hmm. just building convenience stores that weren't selling gas and then you had the gas yep. people that had gas service stations that started getting into it. So you kind of had a divide between right. petroleum marketers and convenience store operators, and now you don't know the difference. Everybody's right. just in the business. Who, who the sort same. of was the trailblazer in that? Well, in the convenience store business, no doubt it was 7-Eleven. Okay. Um, I, you know, when I was a kid, I remember uh, they would have these commercials on TV. You might mm -hmm. have remembered them, too, where they'd say, how much How much do I save going to a 7-Eleven? And it's mm -hmm. like five minutes or ten minutes. Right. And so they were doing a really good job of convincing people yeah. it was about convenience, parking in front, 
going in fast. In. You may pay a little bit more for it, but your time's worth more than the difference you're paying. So, but that was, was owned really by them. an oil and gas company, wasn't it? Wasn't well, no, uh, no, not originally. The Thompson family out of the Dallas is, um, started it, and they later ended up um, getting into the business, mm -hmm. uh, the refining business, uh, and I think it was with Sitco. That's exactly who yeah, it was. That's, Sitco. It was Sitco years ago, but then uh, they ended up with a franchisee in in Japan that became so successful that that's when 7-Eleven went bankrupt after they bought mm -hmm. City, uh, the uh, uh, Sitco uh, refining deal, and they expanded a lot, and they ended up filing bankruptcy. Well, the Japanese franchisee mm -hmm. of theirs bought, bought the it. parent company, and they still own it today. Wow. Yeah. What, what would you consider to be some of the – um, and everybody's like, really, you're this excited about C-Stores? I actually am. I mean, I think because it's, it's, a great changed, business. it's changed so yeah, much. Right. I mean, you and I were talking before we came on air about when I was back in the business and people were beginning to say, we can sell more than just candy bars and fountain drinks. Right, right. And because some of the stores you could go into and they had some groceries, but then all of a sudden they've become supermarkets. Right. I mean, when, right. when did this just snowball effect take place? You know, I, um, I, I don't know. I, I really think the the late seventies, like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier, and the eighties and the nineties, but the it, it it's not really stopped. It hasn't. It it, it, it hasn't stopped, as you will know. Um, our industry does well mm -hmm. when the in, when when the economy is good, but we really do pretty well even when the economy right. is not good. Right. And I think people understand that. And uh, through COVID. If you remember, uh, we were deemed an essential business. Mm -hmm. Anybody that sold gasoline in convenience stores, so we we uh, had to be open all the time and mm -hmm. through COVID and all that. So I think people, it's now such a big part of our of our um, economy and our in our everyday life that what would happen without convenience stores? Right? Exactly, because there's being no such thing as a gas station anymore. No, that's exactly right. And then you have a lot of towns. You're talking about the grocery stores, and you have a lot of towns small towns that don't even have grocery stores. Right. So the only place they have to go is a convenience store. Right, exactly. What what percentage, maybe you can't tell me this, what percentage of a a store's typical sales is gasoline? I mean, is it the loss leader or is it the leader? Yeah, what, it, what it is kinda, it? Yes, it's kind of the loss leader. That Typically, you don't make much money on gasoline. Mm -hmm. um, the, we pay um, tons of money in taxes. Yep. Um, on gasoline, uh, every state and yep. the federal government has to get their their share of that. So by the time we make something on it, it's not a lot. It's it's pennies, it's yep. cents, and then credit card fees take mm -hmm. up the majority of that. So um, it, it's it's pretty skinny on that. But in in the industry as a whole, probably 60, 65, 70 percent of your revenue is from from the gasoline. From the gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a, if you know the answer to this question, I'm going to be shocked. Okay. Is there an average I'll, ticket for a customer? Like, is there like, is it sure average customers, five bucks, 10 bucks? Is there an average? You, you just hit it. It's about, uh, for us, it's about five, really? $5 and 12 cents. It's about five bucks. Yeah, it depends on the store. Yeah. But it's about five dollars now we have drive throughs and mm -hmm. we've had drive throughs in our stores since the 80s we okay do we you like that do you like that we love it you we really do through. we do and women love it and especially oh, women no with doubt. children yeah, because they don't have to car. get their kids out of the car they can get totally. everything they want and um the drive through customer is about twice that we see about oh, yeah. a ten dollar sale through the average transaction there has to be a drive through customer though that you don't like well, we used to have people that would come through and buy lottery, so we quit doing, quit doing that. that. But they would just sit in the line and they would just scratch them. So they would buy a lottery and they come and they they didn't have the courtesy to yeah. pull out of the line yeah. and let other people go through that maybe needed something other than a lottery ticket. So we had to change that and make yep. them force them to come inside. But we we sell anything. But now, through. I mean, I've noticed even even through the history, you go okay. First, you have soft drinks. And then that whole thing turns into you got to have the ices, you got to have right. the ice cream, and then right. you go from water containers to you got to have refrigerators of waters. Yes. And then you've become a miniature liquor store. You yes. have to become a miniature liquor store. I mean, you're yeah. it, you're a miniature grocery store. Right. 
on we a are. hurry, in a we hurry. Are. We are, yes. That is amazing. That's exactly right. How hard is it? And the bigger the grocery stores get and the bigger the the Walmarts get mm -hmm. and the Targets and all those get, the, the more The more it helps drives us. business to you. And more it helps us because people don't want to park way out there and take the time and mm -hmm. hassle and go through the store and – and they realize their time's worth more than a, than the, the difference in the price. That's amazing. I, I stop in Haskell all the time. Kudos God to your Haskell you. store. Thank you. They are my stop. Do you ever eat there? I have not eaten there. You need to eat. The food's good. Well, I'm always yeah. in a hurry. Okay. I, uh, it's my stop when I drive to Oklahoma. It's my stop when I drive home. So I get my, what's the name of those new pretzels, the dots or whatever yeah. they are? Yes. I always get my yeah. dots. I good. get my water. I get my Red Bull. <laughs> to stay awake so you can no, drive. Can stay awake the rest yeah. of the way. I sometimes have to top off, but I have a big tank in my F-150. What do you, what do you think is the uh, – how hard is labor? It, that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. The biggest challenge is is getting enough people. And um, and our our business is so people-driven. It's only people-driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, you anybody can build a box. Anybody yeah. can build a store. Anybody can build anything. But it's only it, – the only differential – you uh, differentiating factor you have is is the people. Yeah. So do you hire good people? Do you not? We we still drug screen in ours. Mm -hmm. We don't. Um, we we have standards mm -hmm. of what, what how we want want uh, the the people to look and act and mm -hmm. and we just think we think our guests prefer that. Yeah. Um, no doubt. And it but it 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 is a major challenge and part of the problem unfortunately is. There's there's a lot of drug use now mm -hmm. that uh, I wish we didn't have, but yeah. it, it eliminates a lot of people out of our our yep. deal because we 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 uh, kind of have a zero tolerance for it. And somebody can get popped, and then the next thing you yes. know, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's it's exactly right. Very tough. How far away are we from? I noticed in one of the stores here in town that's right next to my office. You got the self checkout thing going. Mm -hmm. um, we do. Is that becoming even more of an emergent thing? It, it, it is, and 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 part of that, uh, truthfully, is because of the labor issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we we have stores that are doing so much volume, and and uh, when you're struggling to have enough people to mm -hmm. come to work, um, it the self checkout helps because yeah. a lot of people will go over there and do it. We don't sell age real any yeah, age, age related, related stuff, stuff. tobacco, alcohol, uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and we don't take cash, but yep. the majority of our customers use credit cards, so they they go through. Is it that really the majority help. credit cards? Yeah, it is. Easy and, majority. And uh, yeah, our credit card fees are obscene, oh. obscene. On I what we was have to in pay. two restaurants this last three days that gave me a discount for using cash. Yeah, that's right. Well, and and you're seeing, I bet a lot, and as I am, uh, you go places and they're charging you an upcharge mm -hmm. if you use a credit card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in Vegas, yeah. actually in Vegas, Vegas of all they're places. Doing that. And wow. the guy handed me the ticket, and he said, hey, by the way, there's a 3% discount there if you pay cash. Wow. Like, really? In Vegas? Wow. He's wow. like, yeah, we're just – and the waiter said, we're just sick yep. and tired of, of the of yeah. the fees we're getting popped right. with. Yeah, I think like, it's probably going to become more widespread. That's crazy that you could have a war against cash, and then all of a sudden people are like, if you'll pay us, we'll <laughs> yeah. give you 4% <laughs> yeah. off on that yeah, deal. Yeah, that's right. I would also love to know the percentage of smokeless tobacco products sold in West Texas compared to anywhere else. Oh, it is a huge category <laughs> for us. Huge imagine. category. Um, we, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know, but I, I, it's I just be know. Setting. Yeah, it is, and, and I'm in a study group mm -hmm. um, with a bunch of different people from around the country that are in my business, same business, but we don't compete against each other, and we we tend to always have considerably higher smokeless tobacco <laughs> sales and category than, than anybody else does. That's crazy. What yeah. do you see as the future in the C stores? What's what's out there that you're going, this is coming? Um, what's coming? You know, um, everybody talks about EVs. EVs don't seem to do very well in our industry mm -hmm. except on highways yeah. where there's some people traveling. You know, that's always a concern. You have to worry about whether or not that trend is going to – do away with mm -hmm. in, internal combustion engine, but I, I think there's a long runway, long, way, long, long, long runway. runway. And I think I think the bloom is coming off that rose a little bit that people yeah. are realizing there's a lot more to that than they thought. Yeah. And what sounded like a great idea isn't so much now. But I think um, I think you'll see the industry get, continue to get better and better and better with food, mm. really good food quality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And if, if you can – if you can find a way to get somebody to stop and get everything they need yep. in one place, 
versus going to a restaurant to eat, mm -hmm. then to go over here and get your gas, and then maybe go somewhere else to do things. I think it's the people that reduce the hassles are going yep. to be the ones that are most successful. And so the food is going to continue to be the big push, I think. What are the pros frankly. and cons? Of, I noticed you have sort of your brand you're putting in there. Right. What are the pros and cons of a national brand connecting to your stores as opposed to coming up with your own brand? Yeah, we we uh, we made an acquisition in Florida here not too long ago, and we picked up some um, subways that mm -hmm. were part of that yeah. acquisition. So that's really the – we had gotten out of some of the branded – food stuff, but the subways are in these stores and th they can be really good. They can really be good draws. So they're right. great on the interstate. Yeah. Um, but they're come with, they come with a lot of restrictions and it limits, uh, a lot of people don't know they limit certain, uh, aspects of your business. Mm -hmm. and like they, they may not let you, uh, have a competing fountain drink machine and fountain yeah. drinks are a big part of big our deal. business. Yeah. And uh, so they're and and they'll they'll limit on certain foods you can serve mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think what you're going to see is there'll still be people that are that are taking branded food, mm -hmm. whoever that brand is, right. Subway or Pizza Hut or what whatever it is, uh, McDonald's or whatever, and they'll do that um, because they they're such good draw draws and they they generate good revenue, but the industry is kind of moving more towards trying to do a proprietary mm -hmm. brand mm -hmm. where it's your own and make it good quality. And that way you don't have yeah. those restrictions that way. And everything under the roof is yours. Is there. Yeah. And it is yours and you're not having to share it with somebody else. What kind of a bomb was the whole Bucky's phenomenon? Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bucky's they, they are they were amazing to me. It's a monster. I, I, you know, I know almost everybody in the business, in the industry, it seems like, or I've met them. A lot of them are retired now, but I've never met uh, the owners of Bucky's. Um, but what what courage it took to create an insight it took to create that. They, they they no longer are considered part of the National Association of Convenience Stores because their numbers are so different. So big. And the, and the stores are so big that yeah. they kind of yeah. got kicked out of that deal. So they're in a league of their own. They've created uh, their own category. Yeah, their own category. They, you talk about uh, leading edge, uh, but um, it takes a lot of courage. Those things are expensive to build. Well, just put the real estate pumps. play to say, oh, okay, we're going to— yeah. We're going to put a hundred some odd pumps out here. Yes, exactly. And think we can actually turn yeah. this. Yes, and they have no tables and no. They don't. Oh. They, you, they have great food. Yeah. They have some great. They, uh, I, I love their barbecue sandwich. They're fantastic. They're and great I hope my food. good friend Sean is listening to this. Yeah, yeah I that's tease right. him. He's like, "What'd you have for dinner tonight?" When I'm in Dallas, there's a hotel I stay at right next to a Bucky's up by the Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, yeah. and he'll say, "What'd you have for dinner last night?" I, go, I went and got a barbecue sandwich. Oh, I love this barbecue like, sandwich. But there's no place to sit. Okay. They want That's you. Exactly they want you right. buy it and leave. Yes. Um, so it's just an amazing concept. But they and they, I've got friends that have stores that were with, within two or three miles mm -hmm. of Bucky's, and and it pulls hard. Pulls from, hard. Yeah. Well, it, it I, does. People will drive from their towns to go to twenty go miles to go to a Bucky's. Well, I, I set up a meeting with a friend of mine who I said, "Hey, we were going to the same city," and I said, "Why don't we just meet at Bucky's, and then we'll we'll drive from there and." Uh, I said, I'll just get there before, I'll probably get there before you. Well, I'll, I said, I'll sit and wait on you. Right. And I went in there and I get my he barbecue shopped. sandwich he and shopped. I get my peanut butter fudge. And I thought, wait a minute, you just said it. There yeah. is no place to sit so, out here. No. So I'd go outside right. and sit in my truck and I said, you're not going to believe this. And, I, and I, it dawned on me. Oh, that's on purpose. Right. That's complete it is. move traffic. Yes, get 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 you out. That get is incredible. Out. They is. just changed it the is. game. It's it's a I'll say it is a ballsy move what they did. Well, no no question. And I I don't I don't know how many employees. I've never really heard. But when I'm in there, it looks like they got forty or fifty or sixty employees. Easy. It's like a like a Walmart. I don't even know if a Walmart has that many. Easy. Um, but it 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 is amazing. It well, is amazing. And they've staked out their claim. Yeah, they have. And I've heard they pay their bathroom attendants more money than they do a cashier. I don't know if that's true, but that's that's a rumor I've heard. Well, you know, when I was in the restaurant business, they always said the cleanest place in your restaurant better better be the women's restaurant. Yeah, that's it. And that's exactly it'll cost right. you for every one, it'll cost you ten. Yes. And some that's it. somehow they did their research and said that's Make it. that bathroom clean. That's it. And That's it's a exactly game right. changer. It is a game changer. Wow. Yeah. How many stores do you guys now have? 
We have 90, I think, 90 at this stores. moment. Yeah, we've got a couple of acquisitions that I can't um, yeah, well, disclose can't at this that. point, yeah. but um, we have a couple. So probably by January or February, we'll we'll have about 100 and. Uh, 12, 115, somewhere in that range. Yep. We have uh, one opening next week. Uh, no, this week. One opening Thursday of this week that's been under construction. We've got another one opening soon, and then we've got some we're building. So we we look at the acquisitions mm-hmm. as well as the you know yep. new stuff we're building. So I don't know. We'll we'll probably be over 120 by wow end of next year. I'm thinking. Where does that put you in the pecking order of the industry? Um. <clears throat> At uh, one twenty, I don't know. We'd we'll probably be in the top hundred. Top hundred size change. How yeah, many there's some different C store chains are there? Oh, there's bunches. I would have tons, never. If somebody was said tons. it's over a hundred, I would have said no way. Well, you got you know the big players. Yeah. Like Quick Trip, right. uh, who we think uh, just does an outstanding job, and Sheets, and they're really good in the mm-hmm. southeast, and. And uh, started in Pennsylvania and Wawa, which is in the north mm-hmm. northeast, and and those chains are all moving out yep. different places. Casey's is big, Circle yep. K, Seven Eleven. You got some really big Loves players. Yeah. Now that you start saying, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And that could include just the moms and pops who have three stores yeah, exactly. in a rural area, and that's exactly. considered a chain. Yeah, and the, and the industry has a lot of chains that have 70, 80, 60, 50, wow. 90, 100. You know, there there are a lot of those companies around the around the country that are that are regional, yeah. but they're very successful and get good operators. Before I change subjects on you, is the business, is the C-Store business as big overseas as it is here? It, it Yeah, in a way, it's it's um, it's a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you've been to Europe, yep. so you you know. But, um, yeah, there's some big uh, big ones over there, and they're, they're – I've not met a lot of that are kind of in the mid-size mm-hmm. range like me, and I'm sure there are – I do know that NAX, our our association that you're familiar with, our industry association, does have a lot of Europeans that come over for okay. the for the annual convention and uh, yeah. annual uh, meeting and and uh, trade show and all that. So I, I guess it is. I, yeah. I you know when I'm over there and I travel, I get to see yeah. stop in them, but I don't really know if they're owned by. You know, one guy that owns 30 or if they're owned by an oil company. Oil and gas company. Yeah, it's hard hard for me to know. So you got cars driving up to these places. I'm watching TV the other day. It's a Barrett-Jackson show, and I see your mug on TV. (laughs) Tell me about your interest in automobiles. (laughs) When did that start? Oh, God. You know what? All my life, I had my... My dad was an interesting guy. My my dad uh, was came from a family of nine, and his father died when he was six, and they were really, really uh, very poor family. And he grew up in El Dorado, Texas, and and he always would buy a new car every two years, and he liked cars, so mm-hmm. my dad would do that. And then I had a um, I have two older brothers and an older sister. But one, my oldest brother, that's closest to me in age, was kind of a gearhead, mm-hmm. and he liked. Uh, stuff so he kind of got me into yep. racing we would go out to the racetrack and race a little car he had and then we ended up building cars so i just always kind of yep. liked hot rods and mm-hmm. speed and yep. it, it just it, it grew from there so um it i don't know i can't i can't remember a single you know <laughs> yeah. event that says wow this is when That's it happened it. it just they were just part of my life and what's I, your favorite just, car you got in your oh, collection god i know everybody asked me that well and, then you know and i knew you would ask me that yes <laughs> and i should have an answer um, I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't collect European cars. Okay. I just don't have that expertise. Yep. And there are a lot of people that have incredible, you know, collections of that. I'm more of a muscle car yep. kind of guy. Kinda Cause that's that. the, I, that's the that's era. The era. Yep. That's the era I grew up in. So I've got a lot of stuff. I've got a, I've got a crazy 34, no 30s, 1937 slant back Ford. You probably don't even know what that is. And it's got a 632 cubic inch engine Oof. in it. It's got wheelie bars and parachute, and it has for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah it has roll cage and everything, up, but it has air conditioning. So that's one of my favorites. I love that one. It goes real fast, but it has air conditioning. When I was in <laughs> the food business, the CEO of our company, the owner, a guy named Phil, just a great man, still a almost a father figure to me. I have dinner with him when right. I'm in Oklahoma. He would completely restore GTOs. Oh, wow. And Love GTOs. One day he came to the office and he was in a uh, uh, Plymouth Barracuda. Yeah. 
and orange with the tail right. on the back. Yeah. And yeah. he said, come out here. So I get in. He goes, you want to take it for a spin? I was like, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we get out there and I'm, you know, I'm just doing the 10 and right. 2. And, and <laughs> he, he looks at me and he goes, are you going to punch this thing or not? Oh, what a car. What, I mean, it probably it had just, a Hemi in it. I'm guessing. I have, at that point, I have yeah, no idea. Know. And he's, uh, He'd show me pictures of his GTOs. And uh, are you familiar with the Herbst family up in Nevada? Oh, yes. Yeah, they're yeah. friends. They're big yes. uh, Baja people, aren't yes, they? Yes, they, they are. Baja? They are. Yeah, they do. Um, I was on a, uh, uh, a panel at an industry event here just a few weeks ago mm -hmm. with, with uh, Tim. Yeah, you, so. you tell them that you know a guy in Midland that if when they race the Baja, if, I'll, I'll, I'll run a pit for him. Okay. I, you, Baja is crazy it. to me. Oh, it I looks so it. fun. Oh, uh, I raced. You know, there were there were a number of people here that did that. There yeah, were, yeah, some families that did yeah. that, and the Beale family. Yes, I think, did yes, that. they did, and, uh, and uh, um, there were there were yeah. others. I love it. It's crazy yeah. down there. I yeah. raced down there years ago, uh, the Baja, and I didn't finish the race I was in. But I've always told my wife, I'm gonna go back there. I got. Um, I had a, a good friend of mine. He, he actually works with me now. He's he. Uh, uh, I met him when we were freshmen in college and he was from Parker, Arizona. And mm -hmm. when I was, when we were in college, they used to have the Parker 400, which uh -huh. was a Baja race. Yeah. And it was always on ABC wide world of sports. Yeah, wide world of sports. And one weekend he said, let's go up there. And I got a bunch of my high school buddies and we stayed out there and, and uh, stayed in the desert and didn't, didn't shower, doing anything, lit fires and watched Racing the time. race. And, uh, um, it, it, the, what a blast. Yeah. What How tempting has blast. it been for you to put your name in the racing industry? You know, you got, you got world of outlaws, you got stock cars, you got drag racing. Has that been a temptation? Yeah, kind of, but I try not to, <laughs> try not to you know, it. because I got a lot of opportunities like that, but I try not to, I, you know, I, I drag raced for ever yeah. and ever. And I, I, I have it in the last year or two. Seems like every time I schedule a race, it doesn't. You mm -hmm. know, it, I got a conflict. But um, I've we have some, but not yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. You know, it's uh, but it's just nothing beats racing to me. Does, yeah. It's it's oh. just it's, it's it doesn't matter what it is, what yep. you're racing. You know, it's just it's fun. It's incredible. I, Model I, cars. I'm happy with watching those races. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Vegas the other day, they were getting ready for that F1 race. And, Were they really? Yeah. yeah. And it's chaos there right now. You know, my goal is someday to go to the Monaco. Monaco. Uh, That'd be the only uh, one I would F1. travel to go oh, see. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think it'd Monaco. be incredible. Yeah. Okay. I'll finish up with this. You said you were eaten up with karate. Yeah. When did you get into karate? Um, I, I started in high school in Monahans. I, I had a football coach mm -hmm. that was a black belt and uh, a really good one. He wasn't... Um, and he he uh, studied when he went to Texas Tech, got his degree from Texas Tech. But he was a uh, he was a football coach, a guy by the name of Terry Forga. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were about a half a dozen of us that were really kind of interested in it. Yeah. And he he said he would teach us. And this was during the time when Bruce Lee was oh, showing yeah. up in yeah. movies and all that. So that was kind of Into an interesting time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so and I just kept going. I so I did it with him and and uh, through high school. And then I, when I went to Arizona State. First thing I did is I went and found a little Korean mm -hmm. uh, guy that had a school. He had just opened the school, and I became his first black belt there, and became an instructor for him. And I just was eating up with yeah. it. I I didn't I didn't play college football, which I kind of wanted to, but I didn't. And uh, that kind of filled that niche yeah. for me to compete. Yeah. And because uh, I I really loved the, the mm -hmm. competition and the one on one. And if I got hit, that was my fault. And, yeah. If I hit him, I felt good about yeah. it. So, yeah. you know, it's a sport. It wasn't, yeah. you know, you don't do it out of anger. You do it. Right. Um, and then, so I just kept doing it. And I came back here. I taught at the Midlander Health Club mm -hmm. years ago. That wow, was that's here. You probably, back. that's a long time. Yeah. It was here when I got here. Yeah. 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 Um, and I taught, had a school there forever and ever. And then I ended up moving um, and opening a school that's next to the Baskin Robbins where, mm -hmm. um, the one in the shopping center yeah. that we have here. Um, and I had that school for a long, long time. I have a lot of black belts around the yeah. country and around the state. Do you still practice? Over. You know, I'd, <clears throat> I'd, I'd just do some stuff on my own, but yeah. I don't, I don't teach anymore. Yeah. I keep 
threatening to teach my son. He's yeah. 15, but I don't know if he'd listen to me. I hope he would. <laughs> um, and but and I do some stuff, but I don't I don't do a whole lot of it. And you are to what degree? I'm a fourth degree, um, and I mean? never. What does that mean? Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, it's a good question. <laughs> You, you have all these different belt levels, and you right. get to black belt, and you're supposed to be quasi an expert, right? Yeah. So Because you've, you've paid the price. It's a little bit like becoming an Eagle Scout. Okay. You, know, you, right. you have to go through mm -hmm. all the steps it takes. But you, don't, you really just start learning when you're a black belt. You, don't, uh, you, don't, you think you're, you're good, but you're yeah. not, you don't have it. So I, I quit testing. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're supposed to continue to test. You get to my level. It depends on the... Um, the, the style, but some styles will consider you a master at fourth mm -hmm. degree, some styles at fifth degree. Okay. And um, I never, I, I, ne I got so busy with business, mm -hmm. I never decided to go past fourth degree. But uh, it, it, uh, you can go all the way up. Some, some styles, uh, you can go to 10th degree, some wow. just, uh, they max out at nine. Yeah. Um, but mine was, uh, I had a I had a great instructor, a little bitty Korean guy that was just a fascinating guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he used to uh, he tested me for fourth, and and then I I got so busy with business Done. trying to grow my business, I went that's probably good enough. I didn't I don't yep. need to be a seventh or eighth or ninth or. Isn't funny that you had I, my best wrestling coach was from South Korea, and uh, I remember I went to a camp and he was teaching us how to freestyle wrestle. Did you and, like it? Oh, I loved it. Was you he know? good? Oh yeah. 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 And the, Koreans was, are great fighters. Uh, <laughs> They're great. I mean, they, the, my parents the, sent me away and I, I slept in a gym and we got up yeah. every day and wrestled and it was just, you know, but he was from another country and just came with a different, different, different way of attitude, thinking about yeah. it and all that. Well, I, I took a, a Japanese style in college and, and the Japanese, the Koreans, I, all the Asians or, or Chinese are such great martial artists. It's uh -huh. just part of their culture. Part of their culture. But it has been for hundreds of years, right. not just yeah. not for a little bit. So, uh, Have it, you become a UFC fan? I have. I have. Some of it, um, we started doing that kind of the uh -huh. tail end of my yeah. career in fighting. But it wasn't, you weren't allowed to fight on the ground. Yeah. You could, you, you know, it's full contact yep. and all that, but it, you weren't. You weren't taking mm -hmm. them to the. You could take them to the ground, but you couldn't keep just yeah. pounding on them, right? <laughs> so tapping there's, them out. There's there's a side to me because of my yeah uh, because of my background that I go I don't know about something because a lot of it looks like street fighting kind of oh, out yeah. of control. That's how it all started. Know? Yeah, yeah, it is. But um, I I got to admit I love watching. It's entertaining. It, man. it is. I watch it. it. Do you watch it? Oh, I started watching it back in the '90s when Horace Gracie and all them first yes. got started. Oh. And there was no rules. Yes, and exactly. We were paying pay per view, pay per view with my buddies to watch yeah. the fights. Yeah. And now you know it's almost. I ran into Dana White last week when we were at uh, in Vegas, and I love he's it. always out at Red Rocks. And, he is. Uh, I love it. You know, he goes to the back room. He and, does. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And so let me finish with this. You've done a lot of business. You've seen a lot. And uh, if you had a young kid, I wouldn't even say kid, young adult watching this, what are some of the things that have been kind of forming lessons for you in business that you would say, you know, this, this sticks with me. Um, probably several things. So the, the first one, because I bought, I bought my family's, uh, out of the, I bought my family out of the business in 1984 and I was only about 28 years old, mm -hmm. I guess. And, um, it wasn't shortly after that that crude price dropped to eight nine dollars a barrel, mm -hmm. and all the banks failed, and Midland Odessa was on its back, and yep. and it was awful time, mm -hmm. and um, I, I struggled to hang on, and so I guess the first one I would say is you just don't give up, mm. you know that's yeah. the main thing. People I think sometimes don't realize maybe how close they are, uh -huh. and I had a lot of ch times when I pro I really thought about giving up. It was mm -hmm. too hard, and it was. It was uh, too stressful. Um, ruined a marriage over it, um, just because you 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 fight so hard right. over that. Um, so wouldn't I wouldn't give up. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. The other thing that I think I've learned, and I would tell somebody, is um, study the best. Mm -hmm. Go find who you think is the best. That's what I did in martial arts. Mm -hmm. I would go try to find. I got to 
trained with a guy by the name of Joe Lewis, who's one of the best in the world, and he's he's passed away now. But um, I knew a lot of these guys that were Hall of Fame people, and I, I you you seek out the best, mm-hmm. seek out the best chain. I, I remember years and years ago, Quick Trick. Yeah, let, let me come up to Tulsa. Did and, they really? Uh, okay. They gave me gave us a day, and they sat down with us and said, "We'll answer any question you ask, except how do we pay our people? What what yeah. are the, what our pay structures? And we won't answer how we handle money. Short of that, we'll answer yeah. anything. You, and it, it was like getting a um, a PhD. And then I, I got another chance to sit down with Chester Casio, who was the the founder and CEO of, of uh, Quick Trip at that time. And we had about a three hour private conversation mm-hmm. like you and I are. And uh, so it was just, it was incredible. Yeah. And you listen and you find the best mm-hmm. and go do it. Then the third thing I'd say is hire great people and get mm-hmm. the heck out of the way. Get the heck out of the way. Yeah. That give them finding, a vision, give yeah. them a vision and then let them yeah. make it happen. That whole find the best people. I remember John Maxwell telling me, he would find the best people, and when he was young and didn't have much money, right? He'd try to get hold of their assistant and say, "Listen, all I've got is a hundred bucks, but I'll pay you a hundred dollars if I can have twenty minutes, Miss. and I'll have my quick questions." Right. And rarely was he rejected, right? And rarely did it last just twenty minutes, right? Because he was showing respect and right. saying, "I just Absolutely. want to learn from you." And uh, that's you know, what I do. I I just ask him if they'd let yeah. me. Come see them, sit down with them, whatever. Well, and you mentioned you've mentioned Quick Trip every time we've been together, and I always have told people I've never seen an organization that somehow is able to train people the way they train their associates, and I even watch them when they make change. Yes, that somehow they're like they have. I don't even know if this is in the training, but I told my wife one day. I said, I guarantee you, they already know the statistics of whether you're going to pull a five out or a ten out because they're making change before you get your wallet. They out. They are. They are. It's just, and when, and they have your product rung up before you get to the register. Totally, it's a, it's amazing. Yeah, they, they are the, they are the gold standard. That is, in my opinion. Now, and there's some great chains. There, yeah. there are some. There's another quick trip up in uh, uh, the Midwest that's uh, really, really good too. Mm-hmm. But seems like everybody named Quick Trips are doing a really good job. <laughs> Spell differently, but yeah. Um, but go find the yes. best. That's go so, find the best. And the go best find the best aren't worth it if they don't want to share with you because most who people who are the best in their field right. are thankful they got there. Yes, and they are. They're like, I'll pass on my lessons to you. That, that's I'll exactly just, right. Uh, but you got to ask me. They're not <clears throat> going to usually. You do. And, yeah. we, and we were amazed. Uh, I took some of my management people with me, so uh, we weren't very big at the time. And, and we all got back in the car and we said, can you believe what they just told us? And we felt like they had told us a bunch of, you know, corporate proprietary secrets. stuff. Yes, yeah. and the secret sauce. Yeah. But what we realized after we went to dinner and we're still kind of blown away, we realized they're like a jet. Yeah. And what they just told you is what where they are right now. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. And by the time you figured out how yeah. to get that good, they're gone. Yeah. So you're always behind them. That's and, exactly And right. I think good people – should share what they do because Absolutely. if they if they really are good, they're moving forward. I made a uh, when I resigned and retired from Stonegate and was going into the sort of the consulting realm. Right. I had by chance a chance encounter had gotten the phone number of John Maxwell, the author. Love it. And you so just call him, reach out. I did, to him. and I so I called him. I thought this is never going to get answered. This is probably going to go to a, his secretary and. Got his voicemail and his distinctive voice. This is John Maxwell. Leave me a message. I'll call you right back. And I'm in my truck, and I just pulled into my house, and and uh, I left him a message. said, hey, Mr. Maxwell, Patrick Payton, I'd right. love to just talk to you. Within two minutes, my phone rings. Patrick, this is John Maxwell. Wow. And I How neat was that? And I thought, okay, I'm going to ask him the question. And so I just said, I won't keep you long. Right. And we probably sat on the phone for 45 minutes, and he just asked me questions and said, anything you need. And, you know, the best want you to be better. That's right. And that's so right. go find them. Go yes, find that's them. That's exactly the, right. And don't be afraid of them. And usually the ones Absolutely who are protective not. aren't the best yet. Just no. be humble and go find them. Yeah, that's and, it. Uh, and that's you play it. golf. Just I mean, I, I've noticed the best golfers, that you when you go play with them, you never feel a lot of pressure. They're not going to try to coach no. you around. No. But after a round, if you say, hey, what do you see that I right. – Right. They'll begr- not begrudgingly, but they'll hesitantly say, well, you maybe should just change your alignment a little I, bit. I agree. Well, 
I, they always tell me the same thing. I'm, yeah. I, I stand too close to the ball. Yeah. After I hit it. And they're they're so gracious. <laughs> I'm still too close. To you're it. still close to the ball. But, <laughs> After uh, I've hit it, man, I can't thank you enough. This has been a fun conversation. I I I've, Patrick, I love the you. food thank industry. You. I remember those days, and uh, every time I walk in and I think about you, and I think I even sent you a text one day because the gas uh, pump printed out my receipt. And you remember me sending that text? Yes. I said, "Tell your people thanks for just loading yes. the paper in there." Yes, that's exactly. It makes a difference. That's a big deal to us. We we we. Uh, I harp on that because yeah. it's the little, the, yeah. the little stuff. I had a guy tell me years ago, "Retail is detail," and it really oh, is. That's, that's a what, good that's phrase. What it's, that's what it's all about. That's exactly so, what it's all well, good. about. Good. I'm glad. And thank you for pulling our hose down. And all you're that. exactly. Now, not yours done is, that again. your story is not as bad as my dad's. Let me tell you about my dad. <laughs> yeah, we'll finish I get there. a call from my dad one time, and he was still active in the business. This is before I'd bought the business. And he says, you need to get uh, some maintenance people over to the store. He told me, it was, I think it's store 301, we called it back then. And he go, I said, why, Dad? He said, I pull the pump down. Well, back then, you didn't have the break-off <laughs> break nozzle, yeah. nozzles like they do yeah. now. He literally pulled the pump. The whole he thing did the down. same thing you did. He went in, he bought some cigarettes and some cigars. <laughs> he loved them both. He gets back in. He drives off. He pulled the entire. But you had <laughs> shear valves so that it didn't yeah. Yeah. spew gasoline what a fire but you talked about pulling that hose off i was in uh, one of my stores thursday with a group of people yeah. we were hosting and a lady pulled out and, and took off and just kept driving it we, we could see it bouncing i bet it road. happens every day it does i think it does every day but those yeah. breakaway things probably yeah. are a game changer yeah they are they save the pump they save you <laughs> they save me. yeah and you had a nice nozzle <laughs> well i came back and returned it so. well, thank you bill thank you i appreciate Patrick, it very thank much you. i appreciate right. you buddy that's thank the episode you. thank you all for tuning in have a good one thank you that's great